Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here on episode four of the series of Steel versus Stelter. <coughs> hmm. Stelter versus Steel. Steel versus Stelter. Steel versus Stelter competitions. On the last episode, we made slingshots. Whole load of fun. Alec absolutely wrecked me at that. It was a lot of fun. It we was. both learned a lot, and that is one of the big things behind all of this. Now, since I'd been winning a bunch of these things, we thought instead of me picking the challenge, we were gonna take to Instagram to pick the challenges. We asked you all on Instagram, and some great recommendations came in, which is why today we are making throwing stars out of two inches of one and a quarter inch round 4340 steel. Thank you for joining us. Before we jump in, let's thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. It's an online learning community with over 25,000 online courses and everything from business to design to marketing and you can get started with a free two-month unlimited access trial if you're one of the first thousand people to click my link in the description so check it out go have a look after the video mm -hmm. meanwhile we're gonna have an hour and a half and we're gonna change it up because we're both gonna be working at the same time I think this is gonna be an interesting little twist to the competition so an hour and a half starts now. We're both grabbing tongs. I'm gonna go in this side of the forge. I'm gonna put that in there. Oh no, all the flux is on my side. You want a cup of coffee? You even gotta ask? Let me go ahead and turn on the hammer. Looks like he gets the first heat. Mine's not hot yet. I've got my piece squished down, going back in the forge. Alice is going under the hammer for his first heat. My turn now. Back at the forge I go. We've got an hour and 22 minutes left, Will. I'm coming back out for my second heat. Here we go. Okay, almost done. So my piece is not quite back up to heat. I'm gonna start making a pattern for it. I folded this piece of paper up twice, so when I unfold it, it'll have four points on it. Just four points would be the most basic shape, but we wanna add a little bit of flair to it, make it look nice. Throw some of these in there. I might make these curvier too, so they have a little bit more bite to him. So now I can cut this out. I'm getting one heat ahead. There's my pattern. There we go. That's what it's gonna look like. Okay, I'm done forging on my piece. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let it gently cool down. I'm gonna give it a little thermal cycle. So I'm gonna let it cool a little further, put it back in the forge, heat it up, cool it down, and then it's into the grinding room for me. I'm gonna clean it up before I do some more work on it. I, on the other hand, am going back into the under the power hammer. I've got it flattened down at this point. Uh, I'm ready to start grinding on it. What about progress the coffee is making? How's the competition going? Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah? I suck at forging, but uh, what are you gonna do? Well, it's good fun anyway. So, going in for another thermal cycle on this. I'm gonna let it cool down. I'm gonna let it heat up again and then cool down. I'll just that it's nice and soft and ready to work and hopefully it won't chip or It'll hold its edge a little bit better as it's being thrown. All right, it's up to a dull red. Let it cool down on top of the forge there. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the belt out to get it to the belt that I need. I'm gonna start off uh, with just a 30, like a rough 36 grit, used up 36 grit. And so I'm gonna break off all the forge scale with it and then profile. Right, I've still got some time while my piece cools down nice and slow. And the piece of equipment that I'm gonna be using on this is gonna be this refurbished bridge port. I think it's gonna be my friend on making this here throwing star. I'm going to take a hex collet block. We're making a hexagon throwing star. This is gonna help me make things nice and even. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take a 5 8 collet. This is not the best thing to be doing, but I'm gonna be putting a 5 8 bolt inside the collet. Once I drill a hole inside our workpiece, the center's gonna stay the same. I'm just gonna turn the collet around to make sure that we balance out our hexagon. It's gonna make it super easy to then face it off, get any other holes in there nice and accurately for a smooth throwing, throwing star. So this should be okay, should be good, and I think it can still be pretty quick to use the mill to do this. We're gonna see we still only have an hour and nine minutes left though, so I certainly am gonna be pushing it, that's for sure. It'll be better when it's made out of steel. 
trying to get it to cool down a little bit faster so I can start grinding on it. I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna break off all the forge scale with the angle grinder. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I put a chuck here in the mill. I need a center drill. This will get my hole started in the right place. A nicely well used drill bit that is the same size or relatively close as that flat spot on the bottom of this 16 millimeter drill bit. Now the trouble is I don't have 16 millimeter bolts. I only have 5 8 bolts. So this can be a 16 millimeter hole for a 5 8 inch bolt, but we're gonna crank down on it. Okay, one hour, two minutes remaining. Let's see how hot this is. Ow, that's hot. Ooh, I don't like the idea of quenching this. Maybe an oil. The hexagon isn't very even, but I'm gonna use a carbide scribe to find roughly center. Give it a mark. And I'm gonna lock it in the vise here between this copper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this out and I'm gonna get a hole in it with this. I broke off all that forward scale with the angle grinder and then I just flattened it off with a 36, then 60 grit belt. I'm now ready to get into the profiling. I need to make sure that I'm gonna keep all four of those points in the same area. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab a Sharpie, I'm gonna trace it on, and I'm gonna start profiling. Okay, I've got my 5 8 inch hole in there. I am going to remove this bit. We're gonna look for another end mill. I want some carbide, and I want it to be able to hog. This will do a nice job of that. Back into high gear for this. Okay, we'll pull this out. There we go. This is where this comes in. Set that here. Okay, I gotta fuss with this some more, see if I can tighten up this collet. Okay, that's not working, that's not good. It's just uh, spinning it. I can't get it to hold on tight enough to not spin. That's okay, I think I got another solution. This is not good. I have 45 minutes left, uh-oh. Okay, so I just threw my star back into the forge because I don't think I drew out those points far enough. I'll be able to forge down the blades a little bit more and then go back to the grinder milling about. Are oh, we? I'm milling about just a little bit. Not going so well, to be honest. We only have 45 minutes remaining. I'm very well aware of that. That is not... How are you supposed to forge on these? This idea might need me to abandon ship. I have 39 minutes left. Okay, I'm widening out those blades, making them a little bit longer, thinning them out, just getting a little bit more meat. Okay, all right, here we go. Okay, turn that off, now it's time to flip it. Oh, that sucks, that's not good at all. I feel committed at this point. I just got a little bit of work left, I'm basically done. Nice. I'm not actually basically done, I have a lot of work left to do. Yeah, I know the feeling. It's a nice hexagon you've got there though. It's gonna be very precise. Okay, I need to tap these blades in line. Okay, this is my last side. It should help us out a lot. Hopefully, this means that we have parallel sides. Now, I'm doing it so rough, but hopefully it gets us close. Oh, because the time is dwindling. 30 minutes left. Oh, boy. You know what, though? It'll be nice to work from. I'm going to get these bolts off of here. Then we're going to mount it in the vise and mark it up and drill the last holes we've got to drill. I start grinding on it. Twenty minutes. That should be enough time for us to get this thing ground and heat treated. Holy moly, I'm doing terribly on time. I'm gonna drill these holes with the only carbide drill I have, which is this. Nice and fast. Here we go. Okay, that's a little fast. Ah! You know bursting through with carbide? Doesn't go so well. I am so unbelievably embarrassed. I just burnt up carbide. That takes some doing. That takes some major doing to burn up carbide. Who does that? Okay, 17 minutes left. Whoa! This dead horse, consider it flogged. The horse is not dead till you've flogged it with everything you've got. So here we go. Okay, 
Okay, when I burnt up that carbide drill bit, I got that steel so hot there that it's now hardened. So I just broke this drill bit. I've just begun to grind the bevels on this, uh, getting it nice and pointy so that hopefully it'll stick in while keeping it nice and thick so it has plenty of support behind it so it won't chip or bend. We've got 10 minutes remaining. I'm going in, I'm gonna heat treat it. I'm just gonna heat treat the tips of this so that if it hits something really hard, it will bend rather than break. How are things, Alec? I got nine minutes left and I'm still drilling holes. All right, we got the first point quenched. I've done drilling my holes. Now time to cut out my spikes. Look at the time. Got seven minutes and 20 seconds, not doing well. Not doing well at all, but here we go. I'm using the holes as reference points for this ruler. Oh, this thing's gonna be cool if I can finish it. Okay, time to go make some cuts. Oh my goodness, this is, uh, this is not a whole lot of a throwing star. This is more like a throwing blunt force trauma object. Pretty thick, and I am so disappointed. My last cut, I went on the wrong side of my mark, and this was gonna just look awesome. Last cut, wrong side of the mark. Really damaged. Ouch. I mean, this would have just been such a great that aesthetic piece. That is brutal looking. But uh, yeah, I think if I hadn't messed up that cut, Another five minutes, this thing would have been looking really, really nice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, an hour and a half show went by pretty fast. Yes, it How did. How does yours look? Well, it's tempering right now. Okay, so it's still a little hot. Yeah. Well, that thing looks just awesome. Okay, we are outside the workshop. On well, didn't dig into the asphalt. On that note, we're outside the workshop on this beautiful Montana day because we need to test these here throwing stars. As I said, mine's more of a bludgeoning weapon. Wheels has some nice points on it. We have a board back there with a good backdrop. It is time to throw these things, see who sticks, and see who can hit the mark. Who's going first? Well, I'll go first. Okay. How about that? I'm gonna go first. Here we go. Oh, I missed it. Take two. Oh, it bounced off. Well, it's stuck in the snow. Okay. So, I've hit it twice. It's not stuck once. One more throw. Ah, okay. Will, I, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of point, but it's your turn now. You have to stick it one time. Okay. Oh, I missed the target, but it's stuck like a quarter inch into that MDF. Hey, look at that, Will! There we go. You stuck it into the board. Oh, geez, that's pretty deep again. That's like a half inch. Oh, oh last throw. Hey, hey, and another stick. That throwing star, Shuriken has worked very well. There you go. Oh, it's the star of the show. <laughs> oh. So, I haven't got one to stick. Mine doesn't have points. Yours is clearly won. I'm gonna go ahead and concede the victory to you. Congratulations. Thank you. But I wanna sharpen this so I can at least get it to stick. Here we go. Throwing stars are illegal in the UK, so needless to say, I'm pretty excited to be able to throw one. Nice little, uh, <laughs> it's sharp and it's ready to throw. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, so Will definitely won that one. I can't even get mine to stick after I resharpen it. We're gonna end the video by one congratulating Will. Congratulations, Will. And two, thank you to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has over 25,000 video courses. You sign up, premium membership is usually just 10 bucks a month and you can access all of those courses, learn everything from photography to business to marketing to illustration, graphic design. You can learn it all with Skillshare, which is just 
phenomenal. The course that I want to recommend today is by Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary Vaynerchuk has been very influential for me and his course. Context is key. Social media strategy in a noisy online world is sure to set you on the right path for helping develop your social media strategy with your business, whether it is you are selling throwing stars or selling jewelry. So make sure that you go to my link in the description because though premium membership usually only starts at 10 bucks a month, if you're one of the first 1,000 that hits that link, you're going to be getting two months of premium Skillshare for free. So hit the link in the description below. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video and helping people learn all sorts of fantastic skills. Congratulations again to Will for destroying me on this challenge. It's been a pleasure as always. I can't wait to see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.